pa-live sa ano. Hindi. YouTube. Oh, really? Mm. Oh, okay. Ayan, ayan, okay na. Right. Okay, so I think okay, we but... are our live recordings. Okay, so please, please don't forget, balik lang tayo. We're starting with general terminologies, morphological features of fungi, laboratory techniques in a microbiology lab, myco, mycology lab, fungal cultures, and clinically important fungi. Okay, fungi, fungi, fun, fungi, fungi. Don't know what how don't know how you would pronounce it, but that's basically um, that's basically irrelevant because you're choosing your answers multiple choice. Let's start with journal terminologies first. Um, what type of cells do fungi have? Okay, just a quick review. Basic biology 101. Is it prokaryotic or eukaryotic? Type P for prokaryotic. Type E for eukaryotic. Just uh, just a general, uh, just for me to assess whether or not you guys have a general understanding of fungi or mushrooms in general. <laughs> Type P for prokaryotic. Type E for eukaryotic. Okay, P for P from Alexis. Uh, sorry, E from Alexis. E from Kalyan. Okay. What about that? We only have three. What about James Paul? Okay. All right. Everybody's everybody's in everybody's in unison. Okay. So there's a unanimous vote that it is a eukaryotic organism. So what does it? What makes it different from bacteria? Well, aside from being a eukaryotic organism, it is an organism that, um, uh, comparisons rather, uh, comparisons, it's a eukaryotic organism, it cannot produce its own food, and it requires, uh, it requires, um, majority of the time, it is more or less free living, unless, of course, it is in the human body, which makes it, of course, a pathologic organism. Now, carbohydrate that is found in the cell wall of, of fungi, is known as the chitin. Okay? You could call it chitin, chitin. What do you mean PNE? Mark Segi PNE. Sa kalikita Mark Segi. <laughs> PNE. <laughs> Mark ha? What do you mean PNE? Alright, so the chitin is the one that you will look for. I think you will, you've heard this several times before when you were in your college years, specifically when you're talking about anthropods and uh, of course, fungus, fun, uh, a fungus, but chitin is the common carbohydrate, the most predominant carbohydrate found in the cell wall of fungi. Okay, now, what is the most abundant sterol molecule found in the cell wall of fungi? Ergosterol. Okay, this is actually what makes it different from other organisms, or uh, the cells of these organisms, which makes it different from other members of the um, microscopic world. It has ergosterol, okay? It has two, dif uh, two types of reproductive patterns. It could be asexual or sexual. Again, sexual requires some requires, um, combination of both male and female um, uh, cells, while asexual, it is considered to be the, the self-fertilization uh, self methodology. But different, from, but different from what we mentioned in... Uh, in in parasites, because in parasites they have a genital primordium, right? But for myco uh, myco mycology, sorry, for mycology, they just have a cell, or they just have a cell, and the cell both two male and female cells combine. That's basically how they have sex. Okay, so it's not really a complicated uh, procedure, or although it is. Um, in general, it's not a complicated procedure as as that of um, as that of uh, of a parasite, much like a nematode. Okay. Now, what are the forms of fungi that are of clinical importance? We have two, of course, um, yeast and mold. Okay. When you come, when you call it the yeast, it's some, sort of like it's watery, like uh, it has a bacteria-like col colonial morphology. When you see a mold. This is what you what you're seeing in front of you. There is a petri dish there, right? That is an example of a mold. This one, right? It's a little bit artsy, 
but that is an example of what the mold looks like. It's a little bit cottony also. It has a cottony consistency and a felt paper-like consistency. Okay? Now, we have to differentiate two terms um, when it comes to fungi, okay, or fungi, um, monomorphic fungi and dimorphic fungi, okay? Um, a monomorphic fungi can only exist in yeast or mold form, but a dimorphic fungi can exist on both mold and yeast forms, okay? So it's, uh, it's a matter of and and or. All right, so don't confuse yourself. When it says mono, we're only talking about one, so it's either yeast or mold form only, not end. Okay, that is for dimorphic. We're going to talk about organisms or specific fun, uh, sp uh, sp a specific fungus or, or clinically important fungi that um, that is considered to be dimorphic in nature. Okay, or rather in the human body when it causes pathologies. Okay, now, <clears throat> let us differentiate the appearance of molds in yeast. Differentiate, differentiating the qualities of these two types of organisms. So, molds are, uh, are seen as hyphae in the microscope. Basically, they are elongated branches, uh, elongated branches or structures that branch out. Yun yung parang nakikita nyo na parang mga puno sa microscope. Okay, even in urine samples, you would see these things, but... Not so much, uh, not, not so much in yeast. Yeast are usually considered singly, and except of course for um, organisms that have pseudohyphae, which we'll talk about later. Pseudohyphae means it's false. It's actually a yeast cell that looks like it's branching out. Okay, we'll talk about that later on. But let's continue. Okay, this is the term used for long branching and non-branching filamentous structure. So it is hyphae, okay? Hyphae. Haifa, hyphae. The correct pronunciation is hyphae, but um, it's for singular, for haifa, for plural, okay? It's also known as the microscopic unit of a mold, okay? Please don't forget, this is the microscopic unit of a mold, all right? Clear? We also have to call, uh, we, have, we also have to... Um, understand that when you have a singular unit of um, or a microscopic unit of a mold, there is a collective term for all of them. Pag pinagsama-sama mo siya, this is known now as a mycelium. Okay? So please don't forget, when you combine, um, for example, one branch, si Mark Segi, Nigel is also another branch, and then Great Glenn Ellen Glenn Elian is another branch also, and Catherine Kyle Soria is also another branch, including also natin si Marco Flores. They are all high fee, okay, individually, but together in a group, you guys are called mycelium, okay? Clear, clear pa. So far, you're still following with the general terminologies, okay? Clear pa, Nigel. Isang tangong ah, Nigel. <laughs> Nagulat na naman si Nigel. <laughs> Bigla ko na lang tinatawa. <laughs> Alright, now what are the two portions of fungi, oh, fungal colony? A fungal colony, okay? So a fungal colony, can, um, when you're talking about molds, by the way, this is, this is on the topic of molds. We're still on the topic of molds. So we're talking about, when there, there are two portions of a fungal colony when it comes to molds. There's, a area, there's no, what we call the aerial hyphae and the vegetative hyphae. Okay, so the aerial hyphae maintains, uh, contains mainly produ reproductive structures like spores, while the vegetative harpy, hyphae is the portion of the colony that absorbs water and nutrients for the whole fungal colony itself. This is the part of mycelium that grows on, um, uh, that grows on the substrate. Okay, so parang yan siya yung root system. Vegetative hyphae is considered to be part of the root system of the... <clears throat> of the fungi, whilst the aerial hyphae is more or less for reproductive purposes. Bakit kailangan na sa surface si aerial hyphae? Obviously, because we want the organism to spread its spores through the air. Kaya nga, kaya nga tayo nakakakuha ng mga sakit dahil sa aerial hyphae na yan. Okay? Kasi most of the time, nai-inhale natin yung mga spores. Most of the time. Not all the time, of course. Most of the time. Alright? Okay? Specifically for cases like aspergillosis, 
Okay, so yeah, let's move on to the next things that we're going to talk about. Um, let's talk about the septation. Septate, um, differentiate septate from a septate hyphae. Septate hyphae is um, a hyphae that has cross walls, while an aseptate hyphae ha has no cross walls. And please don't, uh, please don't um, confuse aseptate hyphae from pseudo hyphae because they oftentimes are misconstrued and misunderstood by many of my students. Uh, so, so it's pseudo hyphae already. Okay, no, 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 it's not. Okay. Now the term used for hyphae. With irregular cross walls, it's known as septate. So I'll give you I'll give you guys an example of what a septate looks like. So um, hang on a sec. Let me see if I can open a paint here. Okay. So cross walls. So septate is something like this. So you have a septated high fee, right? So cross walls, cross walls, cross walls. Right, that's a high fail. That's a high fall branch. Okay, that's one branch of a high fall strand. Okay, now when you have a posiseptate high feed, it looks something like this. Posiseptate high feed has irregular cross walls. Sometimes it will have. Sometimes it will have a form, like this. It will have cross walls. And it will go like this. It can branch out. To another form, or, it can have. It can have a posiseptation in the mud in the middle where the branches actually continue inside the cross walls. Okay, so that's known as posiseptation. Okay, so clear, we're clear with irregular cross walls, they do not have the regular cross walls like the standard strand. Okay, posiseptate. All right, medically important um, fungi. Are, are septate except for members of the family zygomycetes, which includes the rhizopus species and the mucor species. Don't worry, we'll have a specific topic on these two, uh, on these mi microorganisms, or rather fungi. Don't worry about them. Now, when we talk about when we talk about aseptate hyphae, they are also they are also known as coenitic. Coincitic, sorry, coenocytic, sorry, coenocytic. Nungungo si Sir Manuel kasi, kasi tired pa siya. Nag-warm up pa siya, wala pa akong energy, no Mark? Napansin mo, wala pa akong energy. Okay, nag-warm up pa lang ako kasi kakagaling ko lang sa work. Okay? So yeah, so it's coenocytic, alright? Coenocytic. Okay? <clears throat> now, we have to differentiate the um, aseptate hyphae from septate hyphae, of course. All right, so septated hyphae, they have um, cross walls, as I mentioned before, hence the term septum, all right? If it's a coenitic, uh, if you can see clearly that there is cross walls, uh, new, every nuclei, in between nuclei, you'll see, brand, you'll see a cross wall, right? But for a coenitic hypha or hyphae, it has nucleus within the whole hyphal strand, but no separation. Okay. Now, we're going to talk about the whole fungal uh, family here. I am going to show you a, whole, a, a good picture of this one. Um, this is known as the um, fungal tree. Everything that you're going to learn in today's lecture will be seen here in this particular slide. Okay, we have the sporangium, macroconidia, microconidia. All right, we have the conidia also. We have the conidophore, arthroconidia. Okay. So this is known as the fungal tree of life. So everything that we're going to study is located here. Okay, For, uh, micro macroconidia could look like this. It could look like this. Okay, mukha siyang hot dog. Isa naman mukhang, mukhang ano mukhang what do you call this? Mukhang <clears throat> mukhang um, ano ba yung parang bean? Ano ba yung pag kumakain ka ng rame? <laughs> Yung, yung winter, ano ba yun? Ano ba yung tawag? May tawag sila dun eh. Winter, winter chore ba siya? Parang yun yung sa ramen. I, I'm not sure, but they put it on ramen. But that's the one that they, it looks like. Okay, so anything um, anything that looks like these two, it's my macroconidia. Okay? So, yeah. This is the whole, uh, this is the whole summary of what you're going to learn when it comes to the morphological structures of fungi. Fung, uh, fungi. 
Okay? Now, a reproductive unit of a fungus, as I mentioned before, it's a single cell. Okay? Usually these are single cell. There's male and female versions of these, and they are known as spores. Now, let's differentiate, uh, let's differentiate bacterial spores from bacterial spores from um, fungal spores. What do you think is the main difference between bacterial spores and fungal spores? Sige nga, sinong makakasagot nun for me? Para naman magkaroon ng energy si Sir Manuel. <laughs> Ayun na, sino makakasagot nun? Remember, we have a Clostridium species and Bacillus species. They are, all, they are both spore formers. What's the difference between the cells of those organisms compared to the spores of um, a fung a fungi? Main difference, functional difference, rather. Wala, patay tayo dyan. At saka, bakit dalawa lang ang students na ano? Bakit dalawa lang ang students bakit? Sir Marco na naka ano? Na naka... Bakit ko lang energy ang mga tao ngayon? Eto na nga, ginagaw, binibigyan ko na nga ng energy ang klase. Eh. Bakit parang onti lang ang ano? Onti lang ang naka-webcam. Na, si, si na, ano, yung mga anak mo, tsaka yung mga riding in tandem. Oo, oh, oh, ayun na yung riding in tandem na dalawa, o. Oh. Well, speaking of riding in tandem, ano bang difference? So, sige, ano, Arnie, ano sa tingin mo difference? Bigay ka lang, functional difference, ha? not structural difference. Okay? Kakasabi ko lang kanina nung ano, nung babalik natin doon sa slide na una. Okay? Spores are for, for fungus, for fungi, sorry, for fungi or for a fungus. Spores function as what? Somebody, somebody's willing to help you out. I didn't see. Nigel, okay. Sir, for bacteria, it allows it to survive yung kapag extreme conditions. For, uh, for protection. For fungus naman, it's for reproductive. Function. Very good. See? Very simple, right? Although it is capable, uh, although my fun a fungal spores, a fungal spore essentially allows it to survive by reproducing, right? But its structure is not so much as protective, but more so on the reproductive uh, portion of it, okay? So unlike, uh, unlike bacterial spores, as I mentioned before, uh, as I mentioned in our previous classes before, it's more on protective. It does, it, it um, I think uh, you need, that's the reason why you need um, 121, okay, and 15 psi, 121 degrees Celsius and 15 psi to actually destroy a bacterial spore, right? So see, see the main, see the reason why it's important to differentiate terminologies. Now, let's describe what a perfect and uh, an imperfect fungi is. So a perfect fungi is capable of exhibiting a sexual um, sexual phase while an imperfect fungi is more or less asexual, okay? But there is always an incomplete, there's, there's an incomplete, uh, it's not an incomplete life cycle, but parang, ano, let's think about it this way. Um, hindi kompleto ang buhay mo pag wala kang kapartner, di ba? <laughs> parang ganon. Everybody here at, at one point in their life will get married and they will have kids. <laughs> di ba? Gandang analogy, right? <laughs> Right, everyone. Mark will be uh, maybe Mark will be married next year. All right, I don't know. He he'll meet he'll meet a girl or a guy depending on his depending on his pre preferences. Bakayan na naman tayo kasi bakamamaya kasi na naman yun magka meron na naman ako matamaan na nerve. Eh. Kaya I'm being politically correct na <laughs> nakadalawang beses na ako, <laughs> di ba? <laughs> Bakamamaya yun ano na ako. So for an imperfect fun guy, it's more or less sariling sikap. Okay, para para um for Amanda's uh, for for Amanda's reference, girl, I am an I am a person who is an independent woman. Ganon. Tapos may may ganon pa, may snap snap pa. So independent, imperfect. That's what my that's the uh, that's basically the main difference different the main difference between these two. Okay. Now, what are the two types of fungal reproduction? So for for sexual reproduction, um, as always, um, the uh, the chromosomes are the chromosome number are halved. Okay, so obviously, even for human, uh, even for human human cellular division or uh, in this case reproduction, the <coughs> the cells that will have 
is that that you guys will have um whether it's from the testes or from the ovaries it will always have a half a parental half right for the parental half of the chromosome so obviously that is known if you have if the product if the product is a half okay if the product is the half is a half the the cellular division that occurs in sexual life cycles or sexual sexual sexually active fungi is in the form of mito meiosis meiosis so if you go back to the study of your spermatogenesis you'll see that organ uh, you'll see that humans uh, human sperm cells starting from a sporo uh, starting from a spermatid will keep on dividing with the process of meiosis okay now um, they require a fusion, the fusion of both male and female cells, okay? And for the asexual life cycle, it's more or less, um, as I mentioned before, it's sariling sikap or self -re these are self-reliant um, organisms and they rely on mitosis only. So please don't forget, if it requires both male and female, um, both male and female chromosomes, that is, uh, that the cellular division that occurs is meiosis okay now fungal spores that are created that are created through sexual reproductions um i'll give you guys four okay um ascospores basidospores oospores and zygospores okay so these are the general terminologies that you need to remember when it comes to sexual reproduction or fungal uh, fungal spores sexual reproduction so there's always male and female okay now we're going to talk about we're going to talk about um, the these things one by one. So ascospores are sac-like structure that um, this is not this is a sac-like structure that contains um, ascospores from the name itself. It's ascus, okay, and the plural term is asci, okay. Uh, the fruiting bodies from um, the fruiting bodies that form the, that form from the ascus is ascocarps. Okay, so parang yun yung makita natin kanina na parang mga fruits. Okay, so they are almost genetically, uh, sorry, um, biological functions of fungi uh, resemble that of plants. Okay, they resemble that of plants. Almost the same. And from an evolutionary standpoint, they resemble a teensy bit of, um, a, a tiny bit, a tiny bit of, uh, of resemblance with plants. Uh, plant um, functions okay now the names and for males and female for male and female hypha hypha okay okay for male and female hypha that are from that form ascospore as an ascospore if it's a female it's an as ascogonium but if it's a male it's an arthridinium okay now these fungal structures contain basidiospores Again, babalikan lang natin yung mga terminologies natin. Basidium. Alright? Diba? Sa uh, fungal structures ng ascospore, it's ascus. Diba? Now, we'll go back to basidium. Alright? Now, basidium is a club-shaped spore-bearing body. Okay? They are, they are club-shaped spore-bearing bodies. And they form through this particular process, okay? Huwag kakalimutan, GPKM, all right? So, they form like this, okay? Bakit meron ganyan? <laughs> um, <laughs> bakit may ganyan yun? Ano? So, starting with germination, they will go to plasmogony and karyogamy, and then meiosis, okay? So, what happens in plasmogony? Plasma, uh, site of the germination, the germination in, is basically the signaling of um, cellular division it will go to plasmogony and then um, it will separate uh, it will separate the plasma contents or the cytoplasmic contents of the cells kaya dalawa siguro kaya dalawa yung drawing ko okay karyogamy is basically separating from uh, separating itself uh, nuclear separation and then the whole cell will, div will divide in the process of mito meiosis okay now Let's go to oospores and zygospores. Spores that form oospores and zygospores are called a sporangium. Okay? Sporangium. And there are two species of organisms that you need to remember 
when it comes to them having a sporangium. It's the oomycetes and zygomycetes. They have both a sexual and a uh, they have both sexual and an asexual life cycle. Please don't forget. Oomycetes have what oomycetes and zygomycetes have what types of life cycles? They have both sexual and asexual life cycles. Now the process is quite is quite similar for both, but um, let me just uh, let me just give you a brief description of this one. It's not actually brief. It's actually a long one. All right, so they, it starts with an asexual phase. Let's start with the asexual phase, okay? A zoosporangium forms, and then the primus zoosporangium is, re uh, is released, and it insists on the host, okay? It forms, a zoom, uh, it forms every, basically everything else is, uh, ba is basically um, a, straightforward, uh, a straightforward process of forming a somatic mycelium. So the asexual phase is, sim is basically the one that produces the somatic mycelium, okay? Now, in the somatic mycelium, the sexual phase occurs. The oogonium and the athridinium forms somatic hyphae, okay? Singular somatic hyphae. And plasmogony of the promordium, uh, oogonium and the athridinium will occur inside. Karyogamy will form an oospore and a germ sporangium will also form in this particular sexual process. The release of these spores will, um, the release of the sporangium to the air, depending on how, how, it was how it was spread through the air, whether it's through strong winds or somebody stepping on the, somebody stepping on the mycelium and then walking around it, and then spreading it somewhere else is the is basically going to form another somatic mycelium. Okay, so what can we infer from this? Each uh, this is an oomycete, correct? So an oomycetes for uh, an oomycetes target is to form first a somatic mycelium. Everything else will be pretty straightforward. Okay. The oogonium, acidinium forms a somatic hyphae. The somatic hyphae produces somatic mycelium. Okay? Plasmogony, and o plasmogony of oogonium. So basically, cellular division is what happens. Okay? Cellular division is what happens. Now, the life cycle process of, of a zygomycete is again quite similar, but it is more or less straightforward but cyclical. Okay? So let's start again with the asexual phase. The spore formation, spore formation to either to either positive or negative mating strains. Positive means a positive mating strain is basically the male, and the negative mating strain is the female. All right, and they and this will form mycelium. Right, the mycelium will then have a sexual life cycle within its within its body. Okay, within its mycelial, it, within its mycelial structure. Okay, the somatic mycelium containing both positive and negative strain combined, they would form a, they would form a plasm. Uh, they would, this this combination will then result to plasmogony, <coughs> plasmogony, and then obviously it will form a germ, and the germ again by by process at which it can it, it can differentiate, uh, it can it can spread. Through the environment is either uh, is through the release of a diploid zygospore, which are released through air or contact. So see, kung natapakan or na bugahan ni Mark Segi yung mycelium, dun siya nag spread. That's the reason why I always start these discussions. It's going to be confusing for you guys if you don't start with the sexual life cycle, with the asexual rather. All right. So see the difference. The actual the, the asexual life cycle basically. Starts the formation of the mycelium, the formation of mycelium. But for for zoo, for zygomycetes, the asexual life cycle must contain both positive and negative strains. If if it's a if it's uh, sorry if this asexual life cycle forms a mycelium, that's fine. Okay. But <clears throat> sorry, uh, but it cannot continue without its mate. Okay, which is the positive strain or the negative strain. 
right? So depending on depending on which initi initiates the mycelial formation or the mycelium formation, that is basically the difference between these two species. Okay, clear? Clear ba? Has something to do with mycelium formation. Okay, clear? Clear, Mark? Okay, so you can come back to the lecture anyway. Uh, you can come back to the lecture again and again. In, I know it's a little bit confusing, okay? I, when I was studying this when I was a student, I did not understand a single word that came out from my professor. So I always had to rely on my self-studies. So swerte kayo, meron kayong YouTube recordings. <laughs> okay? All right. Now, let's go back to... Um, let's go back to the differentiation of reproductive, uh, different reproductive, reproduct reproductive uh, structures. So homothallic and heterothallic. So homothallic, from the name itself, homo means same, and then a retro um, heterothallic means different, right? But what about what? What's the difference? The sexual, uh, the sexual phases or the sexual. Um, life cycle of these organisms occur within the same mycelia, okay? Within the same mycelia. But, for heterothallic reproduction, parang kailangan mga pitbahay siya. It needs to find a, an, a neighbor, okay? Before reproduction occurs, okay? So, so unlike, unlike he homothallic, it cannot survive without um, oh, sorry, it cannot divide rather. Uh, sorry, het homothallic can divide on the same mycelia, while heterothallic requires two different mycelia to combine. Okay? Right? Gets nyo kung bakit? Important. So, babalik tayo doon. This one follows a heterothallic life cycle. Okay? This one follows a homothallic life cycle because it forms because this one forms already a somatic mycelium. This one cannot continue to its sexual phases without its positive and negative strain. So that's the reason why I want to I want to differentiate these two things for you guys. Now, what are examples of asexual fungal structures? So as I mentioned before, your um what, from what you've seen earlier, there is sporangia, cunidia, blastocunidia, chlamydioconidia, and arthrocunidia. These are the things that you need to remember. Sir, ano ang, paano ko maaalala? S.C. Bak. Ewan ko kung anong may isip ninyo. Um, or S.B. Kak. Spongebob Queer Ants. I don't know. Um, just spitballing here. But you guys need to remember these are as asexual fungal structures. I know. I know. Hindi witty si Sir Manuel ngayon kasi nagma-warm up pa. Okay, sorry Amanda. Okay? 'Di ba? Na, 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 na napapainom, napapalunok na lang si Nigel ng tubig sa akin eh. All right. Now, what are the two types of conidia that produce fungi? Okay, conidia that produce fungi. We have macroconidia and microconidia. You've seen the you've seen what it looks like earlier, right? So, macroconidia could be a, a large oval or spindle-shaped structure like what we've seen earlier. A microconidia is a small unicellular round elliptical or pyriform structure. Let's go back to the tree of fungal life. Oh, there you go. So see, look at the microconidia. It looks like a spindle or it looks like a bean. Okay. Bagu beans. Okay. This one looks like a hot dog. Okay, so that's a microconidia. Look at the microconidia. Kumaliit lang na mga butlig. Okay? So see, let's go back. Okay, let's go back. Um, now, let's talk about the large asexual structures where the daughter cells buds off from the mother cell. This is the blastoconidia. Okay? Large asexual structures where the daughter cell buds off the mother cell. It's a blastoconidia. If it's a thick walled, please don't forget thick walled. Chlamydio conidia. Chlamydo conidia. Okay? Resistant, uh, resistant enlargement of terminal hyphal cells. Okay? Chlamydo conidia. Now, there are two types of chlamydo conidia spores. It could be a, 
it could be a terminal spore okay or a terminal chlamydoconidia it could be cecile located in the side of the hyphae and intercalary within the hypo uh, within the hyphal strand so let's go back to paint as always okay so let's start with terminal 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 blastoconidia is basically like this okay that's a terminal one okay cecile is something like this the it buds off here intercalary as i mentioned before the bu the buds are within okay okay Okay, so that is the main difference between these three terminologies of 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 sorry of chlamydioconidia. Okay, now let's move on to the cylindrical or the barrel or cask-shaped spores that are fragments of mycelium. These are arthroconidia. Um, from the term from the term itself, arthro means they are jointed. It's easy to differentiate them from other other forms of conidia. Because they have jointed, uh, they they easily break off, right? They are not like the other conidia that is oftentimes seen attached to the hyphal, the whole hyphal strand. Okay. Now, let's look at the laboratory techniques. Majority of the questions in your exams will be here. Will be here. Okay. Direct mounts. Let's talk about the direct mounts. The direct mounts are used to observe fungal elements. Um, direct mounts are used. To observe what fungal elements we're talking about fungal elements what are we looking for the question that is the question that is asking or what the question is asking you guys is what are we looking for in the microscope okay what are we looking for in the microscope so again as i mentioned before units we're looking at the single units okay so if you're a microbiologist and if you're uh, specifically working in the mycology lab you need to look for hyphae you need to look for yeast cells. You need to look for pseudohyphae. In the case of uh, in the case of pseudohyphae, this is also known as a germ tube. We'll talk about that later. And fragmented conidia. Okay. Sir, paano namin siya ma-observe? Okay, magalala. Tuturuan ko kayo later. Okay. Now, examples of direct fungal examinations include two things or two. Uh, two different types of methodologies. You use say you use saline wet mounts and KOH prep. Okay, saline wet mounts. Um, it is a little bit difficult to find fung fungi there or to isolate fungi because of the fact that bacteria can also survive saline wet mounts. So if you are a little bit confused, it's much better to use KOH. Okay, specifically, what percentage of KOH? Sige, sinong makakasagot? Who can answer this question? How many percent of KOH do we use for fungal <coughs> fungal visualization? Ayan na. Nagtago lahat sila. Si Arnie lang at saka yung dalawang, yung dalawang ano lang ang nakikita ko. Okay. So ang tatanungin ko, yung hindi naka-on ang camera, syempre. <laughs> Ay, ayan na si Alexis. <laughs> Buti na lang, hindi na. Alexis. Uh, 10, 10 to 20% po. Over naman yung 20s. Pero okay na yung 10. Okay. Alright. So yeah, 10%. Now, what's the concentration of KOH that's used for direct examination of fungal elements? It's 10%. Now, I need to ask a, a follow-up question. Why is 10% necessary? Why is 10% KOH necessary? And now, why is 10% KOH necessary? Oh, 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 oh. Why? Bakit 10%? Hindi pa pwede yung sulfuric acid, sir. Parang bet, parang bet namin na sulfuric acid yung ano, gamitin. Di ba, Mark? Parang bet lang natin na sulfuric acid. Pwede din naman ako. Parang si Arnie, gusto niya ano, gusto niya hydrochloric acid. Diba? Bakit hindi pwedeng, bakit hindi pwede yung mga ganun? Pang observe. Sa tingin nyo. Why is it necessary that we use KOH? Hmm. Wala. 
Patay tayo dyan. Sir Marco, patay tayo dyan. <laughs> Why is it necessary that we use 10% KOH to visualize these things? In direct examinations, okay? We're talking about the direct examinations. We're not staining yet. Oh my God. Guys, you know what <laughs> oh, sige. I mean, you should... Bibigyan ko na sila ng dahilan para ma para ma-stress, okay? For example, for example, may alipo nga si Mark Segi. Paano malalaman ni Doktor na may alipo nga siya, 'di ba? Kukutkutin ni Doktor yung part na may mukhang alipo nga, 'di ba? Or I know, mas gusto ko hadhad. Kasi puro kalokohan to si ano eh, puro kalokohan to si Mark at saka si Arnie eh. Okay? So, um, may hadhad si Segi. So, you sing it ni Segi, kukutkutin ni Doktor yung nagbabalat na portion. Ano mangyayari to? Ano, pa paano natin observe, sir? Eh, hindi siya wet. O di saline ang gamitin mo. Pero, sir, hindi ko makita yung fungus. So, gagamitin mo yung KOH. Bakit hindi mo makita yung fungus? Kasi nga, may skin cells doon. It, 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 it causes problems with visualization. In skin cells, it causes, um, more or less, I would consider it as a contaminant. Kasi nga, nakaharang siya dun sa may mga, dun sa actual thing na nakikita natin. Sa, 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 if you're using it as a saline wet mount. Or if you're visualizing it using saline as your wet mounting, uh, mounting medium. Okay? Now, when you use KOH, dinidissolve niya yung skin cells. Okay? It's dissolving the skin cells, specifically the keratinized portion so that you can see the cells. Okay? Okay, okay? Yan yung mga bagay na tinatanong sa inyo sa word exam, ha? Huwag na huwag yung kakalimutan. KOH and Candida, yan lang talaga yung questions about MYV. Oo. Oh, oh. At least man, tell me na alam nyo to. Oo, oh, oh, di ba? <laughs> Nako, kung meron man kayong tatandaan, itong part ng video natin na ito, ha? For today's video. Ito yung tatandaan ninyo. Kasi class. Kasi class usually. I think, if I'm not mistaken, 5% of the questions for microbiology will come from Mycoviro. And most of the time, they will answer, they will ask you questions regarding, regarding these things. This particular part of our slides. Kung nagkakram kayo, ito ang kailangan ninyong daanan. Okay? All right. So, for example, napasobra ng MLC Arnie, okay? Napasobra ng, napasobra ng kakanood ng TikTok video si Alexis, okay? Tapos si Minty, napasobra ng kaka-makeup tutorials and drug aesthetics. So, kailangan itong part na to yung aralin ninyo, okay? Alright, so sabi ko, sir, bacteria lang naalala ko. Basta, more or less, kung kayo ay, kung kayo ay nahihirapan talaga sa microviro, in your exams, I want you to focus on laboratory techniques because these are the, the, the bulk of your questions can come from these things. Okay? So, wag nyo kakalimutan na it destroys or it dissolves the keratinized portion of your sample. Kaya 10% KOH ang ginagamit natin. So, yun ang question ko. Chitin and fungal cell walls are resistant to the effects of KOH. But skin cells or your nails or your hair will dissolve to, K to K form KOH. Or it will... It will be, it will be the, uh, what do you call this? What's the specific term? Um, I forgot the specific term. But all in all, it has something. It, all in all, fungal cells are resistant to the effects of KOH. Okay? Because of the chitin. Diba? Kaya nga important na pinag-aralan natin kanina yung term na yun. Now, KOH can be used on hair, hair strands. Uh, the two types of fungal invasion in hair strands is as follows. We have the ectothrix and the endothrix. If it's endothrix, it's within the hair shaft. Okay? If it's ectothrix, the invasion is outside the hair shaft. Okay? And we also use chemofluorescent dyes that can be added to 10% KOH for veg better visualization. This is known as calcofluor white or CFW. Okay? But you need, of course, oh, of course, of course, you need a fluorescence microscope to do this. And bacteria, oh, sorry, bacteria, fungus, a fungus will stain or will have a apple, an apple green fluorescence or a yellow green fluorescence with calcofluor white. Okay? So, pwede natin siyang pagaluhaluin. Okay, KOH, then calcofluor white, then observe under the fluorescence microscope. 
right? We can also use dyes to demonstrate uh, fungal capsules, okay? The best way to, uh, it is best for a specific one. We use India ink or we call negrosine or, uh, sorry, we use negrosine and it's specific for Cryptococcus neoformans. Bakit? What structure, are we what, what structure are we staining? It is the background. Okay? It is the background. We're not staining the fungus itself. Okay? We're not staining the fungus itself. Cryptococcus neoformans can be a question that is going to be asked of you in clinical microscopy as well. So be mindful of this thing. Okay? Be mindful. Alright? Did I send this? Did I send Okay, Mark, hindi, hindi, lang, hindi lang 80 to 81, ha? Okay, <laughs> hindi lang 80 to 81. The whole part about my uh, laboratory, ano, kayo talaga. <laughs> kayo talaga, basta sinabing, basta sinabing tandaan, ganun ka agad. Well, paano kung walang ba? Huwag ano, huwag memory work. Walang page number. <laughs> Oo, oh, oh. huwag, huwag lang memory work, guys, ha? Guys, huwag walang memory work. Gusto ko meron din kayong understanding kasi kasi talaga pagka puro kayo memory work guys wala, hindi kayo makakasagot ng ano mahirap ang mga exam sa pagdadaanan ninyo guys okay wag ba puro memory work ka lagi ako nagbibigay ng ng rational kung bakit ito yung sagot at saka bakit ganyan kaya lagi tayo kaya ang haba di ba describe the appearance of cryptococcus neoformans stained with india or the background rather it looks like a capsulated organism Obviously, this is what it looks like. This is from the University of Utah, okay, from Aerop Laboratories, okay. Para hindi tayo demonetize, Mark, no, okay. This is <laughs> credits to the University of Utah for giving us this one. Um, capsules will form clear halos against a dark back background, okay. So what are we staining? We are not staining the organism. This is a background stain or what we call a relief stain, okay, because we're not staining the actual organisms. We're staining the background. Okay? Pag expired na ang reagent mo, like the ones that I have worked with in the Philippines, makikita mo, parang nag yung black. Okay? So, itapon nyo na yon kapag ka ganun ang itsura. So, Marco, nang, nakakita ka na ba talaga ng ganyan ang stain talaga ng ano? <laughs> Hindi. Just sa Pilipinas. Sa Pilipinas, parang nag ba? Diba? <laughs> Parang sapot lang actually. Oo, oh, 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 di ba? Expired na yon or hindi maganda yung manufacturer. Alam mo na nagpunta ako dito sa ibang bansa, doon ko lang nalaman. Ganun pala yung itsura nung ano. So ganyan pala talaga siya, Sir Marco. Okay? okay. Balita ko lang sa'yo kasi, kasi nasanay tayo oh, dito sa Pilipinas. Parang sa sapot. Sa sobrang uh, oh, oh. low standard na. <laughs> hindi naman. Ano ka ba? Lasalian ka nga eh. Di ba? Lasalian. Dude. Dude, di ba? Dude. Gagi. <laughs> Alright. Now, let's move on to the next uh, the next question. Now, what are the challenges of an ex inexperienced micros microscopist when identifying Cryptococcus neoformans with India ink or Negrosine? Okay? Ano yung mga challenges? This is a question actually from the ASCP, um, ASCP test bank. Um, if you, it's not my test bank. It is a test bank from, uh, the test bank from the actual exam givers in the, for the United States certification, um, one of the United States certification exams, which is ACP. Okay, so, for example, kaka-graduate mo pa lang Nigel. Okay, talaga si Nigel. Pag pag-graduate pag talaga si Nigel lang yung ano, tinatawag ko no, para kahapon ka pa sir ah. Para sinasabi mo mabagsak kaming lahat. Hindi naman. Si Nigel lang kasi nakaka-participate ng mga pag mga gantong tanungan. Di ba? Kayo naman, wag kayong ganyan. Naniniwala ako sa inyo. Si Sir Marco medyo hindi. Pero pero, pero ako tinatry natin. Kini-claim ko na magiging medtech kayo. But we're not sure what years. Okay? <laughs> charing lang, charing. Charing. Knock on wood, knock on wood. Alright, so Nigel, kaka-graduate mo lang. Ano yung mga challenges na mga mapagdadaanan mo when you're, using, when you're identifying Cryptococcus neoformans with India Inc. or Negrosine? So tingin mo, ano yung mga pagdadaanan mo? Nakapag-microscope ka na ba in general? Wait lang ha. Tingnan muna natin. Tanungin ko muna kayo. Yes or no? Nakapag-microscope ka na ba? Nakamute ka, Bihoko. 
Po. Nakamute ka. Nakamute ka, Dai. Okay. So, um, so, what do you think would be your challenge? Na-try ko po sa ano lang, sa plants. Okay. Pero yung microscope sa medtech, hindi pa po. Alright. So, wait lang. Okay. So, pupunta tayo dun sa plants. Okay. Pupunta tayo dun sa plants na yun. Ano yung unang-una mong, unang-una mong naging problema nung nag, nung may pinapa-identify sa'yo yung, ano mo, yung professor mo? Obtaining po the specimen. Obtaining, no, 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 no. You already have the specimen, right? You, obtain, you already have the specimen. So, when you look when you look at it in the microscope, what is the main reason why, uh, why uh, that particular experiment would be difficult for someone who is new to the practice? The identification po ng parts. Very good. So see, that is the most important thing that you need to remember. When you're an inex inexperienced microscopist, majority of the time you that will have confusion. Thing. You will have a, you will have some sort of confusion or one level of confusion, a certain level of confusion when it comes to identifying parts or structures of the particular slide that you're viewing or of a cell that you're viewing. And in this case, it's the WBCs and artifacts that are often mistaken as capsules and yeasts. Okay? Okay? Clear? At least base of lahat. At least, di ba? At least, at least. Base of lahat. <laughs> oh, oh. Nako, sa, kan sa kanilang klase ba yun? Kaya Adrian yun? No, no, hindi, hindi, hindi sa kanila yun. Ah, very Tapos good. na yung mga ano, Tapos na yung 30% na yun. base of it. Tapos na yung kalokohan na yun pati, my goodness. Klas ha, wag, mag wag maglalagay ng ano, kasi kukutiain kayo ni Sir Marco. Talaga. I-judge talaga kayo ni Sir Marco. Walang, walang oh, ano yan. Diba, kung napapansin nyo, every sem po ikikwento yung 30% base of pill na oh, yan. Oo. Oh. Alamat na, na yan. Kasama na yan sa alamat ng Capitol. Diyos ko, Sir Marco. Ang 30% base Diyos of pill. Diyos ko, Sir Marco. Seven years na ako nasa practice. Ngayon lang ako nakakita ng 30%. <laughs> Dahil ko pa yung may cancer. <laughs> Oo. Oh, yung may cancer nga na may ano, yung may mast cell, mast cell leukemia. 18 lang ata yun, or 15 yung pinakamadami. And that's on a good day pa. My goodness. <laughs> diba? Wag ganun ha. Alright, now. Capsular staining has been replaced by what method due to many errors associated in microscopy? Obviously, we now have other other ways to identify capsule capsulated organisms. And because it's a capsulated organisms, it has antigens. Right? It has a lot of antigens. And therefore, we use cryptococcal antigen detection. Diba? Diba, diba, diba? Napakadali na ng buhay natin. So, hindi ka, na, hindi ka naman mong problema, Nigel. Magdadrop ka lang, magkuha ka lang ng sample mo. For example, CSF, because usually cryptococcal organisms are diagnosed uh, with these particular samples or the detection, or they go into the nervous system. And CSF is the sample of choice when you want to diagnose it. So, eh, ako, sir, nahihirap. Ano ako? I'm not sure if it's actually cryptococcus neoformans. Gaganon ka, ba? Can we try cryptococcal antigen detection? Because sabihin ka, umuwi ka na sa bahay nyo. <laughs> Wala tayong ganyan. <laughs> De, char lang. Meron, even dyan sa Pilipinas, wag kayo mag-alala, meron din dyan. Okay? Um, if I'm not mistaken, please confirm with uh, please confirm with your professor. If I'm not mistaken, I remember when I was still working there in the Philippines, we had the case of, um, we want to rule, the physicians wanted to rule out, uh, want to ru wanted to rule out Cryptococcus neoformans. So, they sent out CSF samples, a CSF sample to the, I think St. Luke's, if I'm, you know, if I'm not mistaken, it's St. Luke's. So they, they're the only ones that have, uh, or in my vicinity, St. Luke's was the only one. But I think right now, um, UST Hospital is also uh, uh, um, one of the hospitals that have cryptococcal antibody screening or antibody tests in the Philippines. Okay? So, it's in the, again, it's in the prerogative of the doctor to request for these things. It's not us. Okay? We can suggest if they ask us, but wag magbida-bida, okay? Wag wag ka na dito kay James Paul, bida ang sarap. Wag ganon, okay? Wag ganon. All right? Now, what is LCPB? You will see this several times um if you are rotating in your internships, especially if your hospital if your hospital is San Lazaro Hospital, as I have some friends of mine who've worked in who worked in San Lazaro Hospital, they have LCPB. LC LPCB prep what is LCPB? Transcribe LCPB first. Okay. What's LCPB? 
nakakatawa yung pangalan niya. Kaya kung ginugugol niyo siya, matatawa kayo. Oh. Ayan, oh, si Diandra. <laughs> si Diandra talaga. <laughs> Diandra, ang tagal nakita kita, hindi nakita. Magpakita ka nga sa akin, Diandra. And I will not accept data lang ako. <laughs> Diandra, where are you? Where art thou, Diandra? Ayan, ayan, Diandra. Nakita, nakita. Hello, Diandra, the chosen one. Okay. Anak, <laughs> anak, anak ng capital. Oo, Diandra, the chosen one. All right, now, it's lactophenol cotton blue, otherwise known as amon stain. Okay. And parts of the fungus that are stained by lactophenol cotton blue is, of course, the fungal cell wall, and it, ta- it stains blue. Yun lang, wala kayong, wala kayong ibang papa, well, hindi kayo mahihirapan, okay? It's lactophenol cotton blue, okay? Um, ACP test banks asks these questions. Mahilig sila, um, if you're going to take the exam, mahilig sila sa mycology, sa ACP. So, if you are planning to go abroad, specifically in the United States, mahilig sila magtanong ng mga laboratory techniques sa, ano, sa ACP. I think I remember. Identify, identify the following. Yun lang naman ang question sa akin na mycology. Some of my friends, they were asked questions about lactophenol, cotton blue, calcofluor, white, mga ganon. So, if you're planning, do do read up or brush up on your myco, my, mycology. Okay? Yes, Sir Marco? Um, uh, si AACP, may pictures yan. So, Uh-oh. hindi yan, unlike the board exam na medyo limited. Minsan yung mga tanong na, literal na, what is this? Ganun lang. Mm-hmm. Ganun lang yung question sa akin. What is this? Tapos, um, nakalagay sa ibaba. Nakalagay, nakalagay sa baba kasi nung picture, LCPB prep. So, I already know uh, from that from that particular from that particular labeling, alam ko na na, ah, okay, fungal structures to. So, yun lang yung select mo. Um, usually, they will have a checkbox. Uh, it's it's fungal. Uh, fungal elements. Uh, usually, the fungal elements included is yeast cells, hyphae, and conidus, conidospores. Tapos may, may panggulo doon na bacteria. Wala namang bacteria. Okay? Kasi hindi na-stay ng lactophenol cotton blue ang bacteria. Okay? So, clear? Clear tayo doon? So, if you're planning to take ASCP, okay? Usually, yan yung mga questions sila. What is this? Okay? Ganun lang yan. Okay? Now, so we're back with what 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 is stained. So, fungal, st- it stains blue. Um, techniques that may be utilized when performing LCPB, uh, specifically if it's a stay, if it's an organism, or rather, uh, yeah, if the site of uh, if the site or the specimen is uh, is a little too hard to see visually, we can do teasing, or we can do scotch tape preparation, or the cello flag technique. Ang gagawin nyo lang sa cello flag technique is parang kukuha kayo ng kakuha kong paper. Nakikita ba ako sa camera? Ay, hindi pala ako naka-on ng camera. Sorry naman. Kaya pala walang walang energy ang mga tao kasi hindi nila nakikita. So, kung nga ito yung tape ninyo, yung, cellulose, yung cellophane tape ninyo, itong paper ko, lalagay nyo lang yan sa stick, okay? sa ball pen, kasi gaganyan nyo lang siya. Okay? And then, and then, yung tape na yan, yung tape na yan, ipapatong nyo lang yan, igaganon nyo lang yan dun sa slide. Tapos, ididiin nyo siya. Okay? Ididiin nyo siya. Para walang air bubbles na mapupuno. Tapos, yung lactophenol, kakalat. So, ganon yung itsura niya. So, parang igaganyan nyo lang yung tape doon sa slide. So, ito si slide. Okay? So, kaganyan siya. Tapos, didiin nyo siya. Tapos, gaganon nyo ng ball pen. Para kumalat yung stain. Yun yung tinatawag natin yung cello flag, cello flag technique or teasing. Okay? Hindi inaasar ha. Okay, wag ka loko-loko. Wag ka loko-loko Arnie at saka ma- ano ha Mark ha? Hindi yung inaasar, yung teasing sir, inaasar. Hindi. Yung parang kinukusot mo yung ano para kumalat yung para kumalat yung um LC- LPCB. Okay? Um you can use per- you can permanently seal LCPB preps using nail polish or per mount kung social ang laboratory mo and per mount is actually a toluene based uh, mounting medium which means that it extracts oxygen from the it, it extracts oxygen from the whole thing okay from the whole specimen or from the whole uh, the, the thing that you're staining 
Bakit bakit kailangan walang oxygen? Kasi baka magkaroon din, baka tumubo pa yung mold dun sa loob. Kaya mas maganda per month actually. Nail polish not that much. Kung medyo cheap lang yung hospital natin, ganun. All right, yung medyo pucho-pucho na hospital diyan sa ayoko magsalita, pero itago na lang natin sa pangalang Bang Bang. Okay? Bang Bang into the room, ganun. Okay? Sa madami mga hospital na pucho-pucho doon. Feeling ko sila yung mga manufacturer sir ng ano, ng ng expired Oo, oh, oh, ng expired na ano, ng expired na India Ink. Feeling ko sila din 'yon. Okay? All right. Now, let's move on to your next uh, next method. So, gram staining modification recommended for mycology laboratories. So, for example, you do not have any type of any type of those uh, of those staining methodologies that we mentioned. You don't have a fluorescence microscope for for calculflor white and you only have you only have uh, you only have you only have what do you call this? You only have um, gram stain in your laboratory. You can use Hucker's modification. So ano ba pinagkaiba ni Hucker's modification? It's a form of gram staining that is quite different because you include you take into consideration KOH. Okay? So magdadagdag ka lang ng extra step before you start with the primary staining which is KOH. And then you fix it by heat. And then that's basically it. That's Hucker's modification. Yeah, ah, okay, sir. Baka kasi ano, baka kasi mamaya. Baka kasi mamaya makonfuse kayo. Bakit, bakit kailangan pa ni Sir Manuel mag-discuss ulit ng gram staining? Wag na, okay? Yung Hucker's modification, meron lang KOH para ma-destroy yung other interfering substances or structures. Alright? So clear? Hindi ko na kailangan explain or kailangan ko pang explain hackers modification. Arnie. Hindi na? Kasi oh. I will take time for you, Arnie. I will take time if you want me to discuss <laughs> gram staining. Hindi na. Kasi bubugbugin ka ni Nigel. Kasi si Nigel gusto na mag-aaral ka agad, tuloy-tuloy na. Okay? <laughs> Wala na, Arnie, ha? Clear tayo doon. You understand that the, the, you need you need a KOH step prior to starting your um, gram staining procedure. Now, because we're doing gram staining, what is the gram stain reaction of fungi? Is it gram positive or gram negative? Sige nga. Raise your hand if you know the answer. I think a majority of you knows the answer already. I just wanted to see if you guys know. Is it gram positive or gram negative? Patay tayo dyan, Sir Marco. Wala talaga. <laughs> uh, Sir Marco, wala. <laughs> ayan, ayan, ayan. Maria yep. Cristina. Meron, Sir Marco. Meron, meron, meron. Sige. Sige. <laughs> I-hold mo na natin. Oo, yung, oh, oh, yung judgment natin. I-hold mo na natin. Maria Cristina, kay Sabado. Gram positive po. Okay, very good. O, diba? O, meron naman pala, Sir Marco. Kala ko wala. <laughs> Nahiya lang sila. Nahiya lang. Wala na tayo mag-react, Sir Marco. Okay? Thank you, McKay. At saka, bakit ka nagtatago ngayon, McKay? Anong problema natin? May pimple ka ba? Ha? Bakit nagtatago ang mga students? Last day na natin ngayon, eh. Tapos, hindi pa. Tandaan nyo, mag- uh, it's always been my tradition to take a class picture with my students before I leave them before their exams kasi i wanted to see their 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 child their their childhood innocence before they take before they take a an arduous exam diba arduous talaga yung term ko <laughs> make sure na maligo mamaya paghihirapan niyo paghihirapan niyo talaga yung exam mamay na bibigay ko kasi kaya arduous yung term ko okay now Let's differentiate bacterial fung- bacteria from fungal elements in a gram stain procedure so bacteria usually they uh, they we usually stain um sorry na low battery daw yung ear for in ear here low battery daw ano yung low battery ah okay okay so um let's go back to my discussion differentiate bacteria from fungal elements in a gram stain based on their size cocci basically they we stain the cocci and yeasts are twice the size of a gram stain a gram positive cocci if it's bacilli, usually it may be confused with hyphal structures, which are two times the size of a gram-positive rod. Okay? So bacteria and cocci are almost of, more often than not confused with these two things. But don't, but don't fret. A yeast cell will be twice the size. Okay? And again, hyphal structures are twice the size of bacilli. 
okay? Coxite, two times for many cells, okay? So please don't forget this particular slide. Now, what stain is used to detect fungi in the blood and bone marrow samples? It's gemsa or white, right? Sorry, right, not right, white, tuloy, right stain, okay? Gemsa or right stain, okay? And which fungi is stained well in blood smears? Okay, so in blood smears, you would often see this in case presentations, and you might think this is you might think this is a question about um, about um, what do you call this WBC anomaly, but you might be mistaken. So please, please don't forget that Histoplasma capsulatum and Cryptococcus neoformans may be stained well in blood smears, and they look like this. Okay, so see. See the difference? Why it does not look like a anom an anomaly? It's because look at the yeast cells inside. They look like what? They have bluish staining. An anomaly, much like a toxic granule, will not have a bluish stain or a bluish tinge on it. Okay? This is from a Facebook group, and you're lucky enough to have it in your time because in my time, I was confused. How does a how does a yeast cell look like or what a yeast cell look for, looks like in slides or blood smear slides? Okay, so histoplasma capsulatum is usually an intracellular fungus and usually targets your monocytes and your your uh, neutrophils. And in this case, majority um, I think all of these are neutrophils. I'm not sure about this one. Uh, yeah, yeah, it's a neutrophil also. Okay. Okay. So gets nyo kung anong pinakaiba? May parang bluish tinge. Ayan, no, nakita yung bluish tinge. Pagka WBC anomaly siya, like uh, toxic vacuolation. Ito, may toxic vacuolation siya. Oh. Look at the toxic vacuolation. Walang bluish tinge. Hindi na i-stain yung nasa loob. Kasi, wala namang i-stain sa kanya kasi vacuolation nga lang siya. Pero ito kasi, merong, mga ka merong, merong carbohydrate elements. Ngayon, yung tinatawag natin shitein. Okay? Clear? Clear, clear, clear? Madali lang ala, madali lang no, tapos pag tinanong na sa exam ninyo, ala, ala sir, ano 'yan? Anong kaguluhan 'yan? Pero hopefully maalala niyo. Okay? Okay? Okay, okay, okay. Clear? Now, let's go to stains used to see clinical mycology, uh, clinical samples for fungi. Um, the, this the stain used to clean to screen clinical samples for fungi is methenamine silver, okay? Screening clinical samples. So in in social na mga histopathology labs, you will see this used, okay? Social na mga histopathology labs. Usually, they use it to, to clear the sample. So, maybe fungus yung, maybe it's a fungus that caused the patient to have this particular, this particular um, anomaly or what you call this um, uh, disorder. Kasi nga, wala, they, all, they ruled out everything. It's not, uh, it's not, uh, it's not anything, it's not anything, pathologic it may be a microbiology it, it could be a mycological organism or it uh, it could be a mycological sa uh, mycological consideration or it could be a it could be bacteriologic uh, consideration so methenamine silver is one of those things that we can use fungi fung a fungus will stain black okay this is from the university of texas if i'm not mistaken yeah oh no 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 it's not from the university of texas it's from another facebook group okay you, you guys are so lucky Okay, so fungi, fungi, a fungus is stained brain is stained black with a tinge of pink and red. Okay, so bakit sir, ito may pictures, kasi majority of the time the questions that you will be asked for fung, uh, for for fungi is more or less in ASCP. So I cannot describe it. I cannot describe it to you. But again, these are additional things for you. Okay, tinutulungan ko na kaya kasi advance ako magisip. Okay, now. If we're using um, if we're using silver nitrate, uh, we can use it. Uh, we can use uh, a modification of methenamine silver that is used in histolo histological section is gamori methenamine silver. Okay, it's known as GM. It's known as GMS stain. Okay, it's a modification of this particular stain, but still, it will have it will yield the same results for you guys. Okay, for histopathology. Now. <clears throat> This is a common histopatholo histopathological stain used for the detection of fungal elements in tissue section. This is known as perio periodic acid shift or pa PAS. It's a fast green. Fast green is used to add or provide contrast in the stain. Okay? 
not really important in this in this discussion unless of course you want to correlate it with these pathologic techniques then that's the time you can delve deep into this one now this is a rapid test that uses human or sheep serum to initiate growth of pseudo hyphae and this test is used for the presumptive diagnosis of what fungus this is known as the germ tube test okay you can use human serum don't worry okay germ tube test and it's used for the presumptive identification of candida albicans okay so see using um understanding mycology is as easy as that pwede na kayong magtake ng exam ninyo you, you with the amount of knowledge i've given you but kung gusto nating magbida-bida like James Paul dito kay James Paul bida ang sarap di ba kung gusto nating magbida-bida we have to also talk about fungal cultures right now optimal growth ra uh, growth range for fungal cultures is 25 to 30 degrees celsius you will not believe it but in my laboratory in the laboratory that I'm working in rather we have an incubator that is that is left at room temperature you will not believe it in the philippines we would just leave it in the we would just leave it in the outside of the uh, outside or inside the biosafety cabinet but here we have our own uh, we have our own um, incubator for this one when i first arrived in the middle east the, i said rt incubator what's rt incubator room temperature incubator Meron pa lang may ganun kami. Sa Pilipinas kasi consistent na 25 to 30 degrees Celsius yung yung temperature temperature ng laboratories diyan sa Pilipinas. Kaya nilalagay lang namin yung mga fungal cultures dun sa biosafety cabinet. And then when I and then when I went here, oh, meron pala talagang ano, uh, room temp incubator. So yeah, it's just it's just like any other incubator but the temperature range is controlled at 20 to 30 degrees Celsius. Okay? Clear? Clear? Okay. Now Let's talk about the antibiotics that may be added in culture media. So we want to destroy bacterial contamination. Um, obviously, we need to use strong antibiotics. That's the reason why we have chloramphenicol and cyclohexamide. Diba? Cyclohexamide. It inhibits the growth of bacteria or chloramphenicol. And cyclohexamide inhibits the growth of saprophytic fungi. Ano ba yung mga saprophytic fungi? Yung mga nasa balat-balat natin. Because majority of the time, majority of the time, guys, majority of the time, the samples that are going to be submitted for mycology, for mycology studies is going to come from the skin or from, or maybe the environment. If you're, if you are working in a laboratory that does um, environmental microbiology, okay? So in hospitals that have a strict infection control, uh, they, that have strict infection control protocols, they will have they will have samples of of the soil, or sorry, not the soil, or swabs of the floors, the swab swabs of swabs of doorknobs, and part of the part of the protocols for these types of hospitals is they want to have a, a sterile room or a sterile area. So kaya kailangan din yung saprophytic fungi take into consideration okay because they might cause they might cause misdiagnoses or an uneventful events uh, uneventful things to happen to your samples okay or specifically in your to your cultures or fungal cultures now primary isolation media for both pathologic and non-pathologic fungi is your soborodextrose agar um the contents of uh, soborodextrose agar the antibiotic contents of soborodextrose is basically uh, is basically cyclohex um not cyclohexamide it's chloramphenicol just to prevent the growth of bacteria but other uh, other other fung fungi will be uh, will be able to grow in this particular um culture media now sda is maintained at a ph of 5.6 because because uh because funguses or fungi sorry fungi love acidic environments okay now, SDA with cyclohexamide and chloramphenicol are commercially available as mycocell or mycobiotic medium or my media. Okay? Mycocell. So, sir, kailangan pa namin alalahanin yung commercial ano. Yes. It was, um, it, I found it in a question, I found it in a question in, um, a recall question in the Philippines. Because sometimes in the Philippines, they will ask us brand names of certain things. Okay, so be mindful of these things. Sometimes lang, sometimes. So I added it here for you guys, for your information. Okay, so cyclohexamide and chloramphenicol uh, in SDA 
will be commercially available as Microcell or Microbiotic Media or will be sold as Microcell. Trade name Microcell TM. Okay? Now, transcribe DTM. DTM is dermatophyte test medium. The indicator dye inside is phenol red. Uh, dermatophyte raises the pH of the medium. Hence, the color will turn from a yellow to a red. Okay? Phenol red. Okay? It will raise the pH. So, it's already acidic. As I mentioned before, it's already fung uh, a, fun a fungi loves acidic environments. Therefore, the initial, uh, the initial, the initial pH of the medium is, yellow, uh, is, is acidic, hence color yet, red. Once, it, once, once the dermatophyte produces, produces its metabolites, it will, turn the, it will turn the environment or the agar red because it causes, uh, its metabolites are alkaline in nature. Right? Now, another thing that we can use for, um, another thing that we can use for growing fungus, a fungus, is brain heart infusion. Okay? Basically, pinakuluan lang na utak at saka na puso. Kaya, brain heart infusion. Okay? Ganon. So, sir, saan galing? Um, it could come from pigs. It could come from, it could come from sheep. Okay? Doesn't really matter. The source doesn't really matter. But there are nutrients present in this particular infusion that is that is viable. That makes it vi that makes it a, su a suitable environment for fungus for a fungus. Okay. Now, modification of BSI exclusively used for dermatophyte culture is again um, BHI with chloramphenicol and cyclohexamide. Okay. So, lagi nilang tatandaan chloramphenicol and cyclohexamide. Now. What BHI media modification is used for the recovery of fungi in blood and bone marrow? It's known as the bi, uh, biphasic blood broths. Okay, we also have a biphasic blood broth for brucella. Okay, please don't forget. Okay, please don't forget. We also have castaneda blood broth. Okay, for for brucella. So wag wag nyo kakalimutan. Ang pinagkaiba lang nito meron siyang chloramphenicol at saka cyclohexamide. Yun lang lagi yung tatandaan niyo. Okay, clear. Clear, Mark? Okay. Tumatango si Mark, so we can go. We can move on. Now, what is uh, the differential media used for the growth of Cryptococcus neoformans? Um, again, this is uh, this is back. Uh, this is fungal. Uh, this is a fungus sensitive, se fungus specific um, culture media that only allows the growth of Cryptococcus neoformans. It's known as the bird seed or niger seed or Stabes medium. And it typically grows um, Cryptococcus neoformans with in, in within the range of four to seven days. Okay, bird seed, niger seed, or Stabes medium. Okay, so please, please, please don't forget these things. Okay, now what culture media is used to stimulate the conidia and chlamydospore production of candida for identification purposes? We have cornmeal agar with tween eighty. Okay, please don't forget we have tween. Twin hydrolysis tests for mycobacteria. Please don't forget that we have twin 80 for funga for fungi. Okay. What other organisms aside from candida that can be differentiated in this in media? We have dermatophytes like we have trichophyton rubrum versus trichophyton pentagrophytes on the basis of pigmentation. Because in cornmeal medium, trichophyton rubrum will, will form what? Will form red colonies. Hence the name trichophyton rubrum. Trichophyton mentagrophytes will form blackish colonies on this particular agar. All right. Now, differential media that you that is used to convert molds of Blastocystis dermatitidis in its it, to its yeast phase is the cotton seed medium. Okay. And rice media is used for, as a differential media for which organism? Microsporum uduini. Okay. Microsporum uduini. Now, we also have biochemical tests. Biochemical tests that is, a use, that is used for a confirmatory test for Cryptococcus neoformans traditionally. Okay, we now have genetic probes and antigen testing. But traditionally, we use biochemical testing to confirm the presence of Cryptococcus neoformans if it grows in birdseed agar. And usually, we use nitrate reduction test in urea agar. If it grows on urea, then that is basically Cryptococcus neoformans. If it reduces nitrate to nitrite, then that is Cryptococcus neoformans. Okay? Now, we're going to, we're going to have a break, 30-minute um, break, because I need to drink water and eat my lunch. 
<laughs> but we're going to talk about medically important fungi next. Okay? Hopefully, you guys are still here. And you can have your breakfast. Or Sorry. What time is it there in the Philippines? Is it 3 o'clock? 2.40. 2.40. It's about so we'll see. So we'll see each other at 3 o'clock. Is that cool? All right. Yes, but Okay. I'm going to stop the stream now. Um, hopefully, we get to see each other afterwards. Hindi pa kayo nakatulog, okay? Bye for now. I'm going to exit the call. Okay? Bye.